dear students welcome back to this course industrial wastewater treatment and today uh, we are going to talk about one very different topic as a part of the last lecture of this unit 2 and the topic is common affluent treatment plant which is also known as CETP. So the outline covers concept of CETP, benefits of CETP, types of CETP and guidelines for CETP design. So the concept of CETP is envisaged to treat the affluent generating from clusters of small scale industries. Now listen to carefully, it is not for single industry. So the word common indicates, it is common for cluster. And this cluster is of small scale industries which do not have much finance or space available with them as well as technical expertise available to provide full-fledged treatment to affluent generated. So this scheme of CETP, it is centrally sponsored scheme that is by central government, by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So far many CETPs have been already installed and they are operated all over country. Here industries are required only to give some kind of primary treatment to the wastewater, rest all treatment is given in the CETP. So the benefits of CETP we can summarize as first point. There is no direct responsibility on part of industry to treat and dispose its wastewater. At the same time, complete full flesh treatment of wastewater is ensured. The third benefit for pollution control board which monitors the disposal of wastewater, there is single point monitoring. So task becomes very easy. Collectively at CETP higher degree of treatment including advanced or tertiary treatments are provided which would have been impossible for individual industry and the last benefit the overall potential of reuse or recycling of treated wastewater is enhanced by this combined common treatment. Okay. So basically there are two types of CETP. One is for homogeneous industry. So homogeneous industries are industries which produce similar goods and they also have similarities in characteristics of wastewater. The second category is heterogeneous industries. So these are the industries. They produce widely divergent goods and there is no any similarities in characteristics of wastewater produced by these industries. So obviously the task of designing CETP for first group is easy whereas for second group heterogeneous industry it becomes little bit complicated. Now just pause the video and think CETPs why they are also referred to as Combined affluent treatment plant. Remember, I have given definition common affluent treatment plant. But at the same time, it is also known as 
combined affluent Friedman plant. So, which is correct? Common or combined? I am sure this task was not easy one. So, when domestic waste that is sewage is mixed with industrial waste at CETP and joint treatment is given, such CETP is known as combined affluent treatment plant. So, common affluent treatment plant is labeled as combined treatment plant when there is mixing of domestic waste or sewage with industrial waste water. Now, what are the benefits of this combined treatment at CETP? So, mixing of sewage ensures dilution of toxic substances and dissolve inorganic solids which are higher in industrial wastewater. Sewage contains lot of microorganisms and industrial wastewater do lack this microorganism. So, mixing of both the waste ensures seeding of industrial wastewater with microorganism. So, for secondary treatment, there may be no need of adding cow dung or microbial culture. Next benefit is reduction of cost by eliminating two separate treatment facility. Here in absence of mixing of sewage, industry need to provide separate STP. So, by mixing instead of two treatment plants, one treatment plant is there. Hence, there is drastic reduction in cost. And the last benefit, sewage along with microorganism also provides nutrient like nitrogen and phosphorus required for growth of bacteria during biological treatment. So, these are the benefits of providing combined treatment at CETP. Now, let us look at pattern of financial assistance. As I said, CTP is centrally sponsored scheme, but there are conditions. The first condition, the project of CETP must be approved by state government and state subsidy is 25 percent of total project cost. Once this is approved, then only the central government provides subsidy, 25 percent of total project cost. The entrepreneur's contribution or industry which are forming CETP, they are expected to contribute 20 percent of the cost and the remaining 30 percent can be taken as loan from financial institution. If the entrepreneurs do not want to take loan, then the remaining 30 percent they can add and make their contribution 50 percent. One has to remember that central assistance will be provided only for capital cost of CETP and Funds which are released for CEDP must be utilized only for that purpose and not for other purpose. So, no funds will be provided for operation and maintenance of CEDP and the industry forming CEDP must make sure that there is enough fund available for operation and maintenance. Now, let us look at steps for design of CETP. So, the National Environmental Engineering Research Institute 
also known as NIRI, has uh, provided steps for design of CETP with consultation with MOEFCC. So, first, preparation of inventory of participant industry. Each industry, what is the volume of wastewater generated as well as characteristics of wastewater. The second step is design of conveyance system from the industry to location of CETP, whether it is by sewer system or sometime if the volume is less and distance is less, then even chankers are provided for collection. The third is decision about which kind of pretreatment to wastewater should be given by each of these industries. Next is conduction of treatability studies at bench scale and pilot scale. So, in the first unit, we have already discussed about treatability studies. The next step is explore potential for reuse and recycling of treated wastewater as well as byproduct recovery from waste. And next point is decision about disposal of treated affluent where it should be disposed of. Once these steps are implemented, then the out of various available option, the best suiting option is finalized for the treatment and then cost benefit analysis of the finalized option is carried out. Based on this, the cost dis distribution is decided and it is uh, distributed among participating industry. The cost includes capital cost, then operation and maintenance cost. Now, if it is homogeneous industries, then the distribution of operation and maintenance cost is based simply on quantity of the affluent. That means industry discharging more quantity of affluent will pay more. If the CETP is for heterogeneous industries, then here instead of volume, the distribution of operation and maintenance cost is decided by the load of pollutant. So, the stronger the waste discharge by industry, more will be the cost or contribution by the industry. Now, the last point, standards for disposal to CETP. Okay. So, as the disposal standards, this CETP is specific special scheme for small scale industry. So, the disposal standards are applicable to small scale industry having total discharge only up to 25 kiloliter per day and for each CETP the respective state pollution control board is given a responsibility to prescribe the standards for final disposal of treated wastewater from CETP. Now, this standards also considers 
local needs and conditions. So, using the disposal standard by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. As guideline, the State Pollution Control Board decides the disposal standard for CETP. So, I hope you have enjoyed this information. And with this, we are concluding our discussion on unit number 2 waste minimization so thanks everyone and we will meet again with a new unit which is based on industries